Hey, what's going on, everybody? Locked on Badgers. Big time guest today, Gus Yaldin, joining the show. Very, very excited to chop it up with uh, the four-star Badgers verbal commit. All that coming up on today's Locked on Badgers. You are Locked on Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Ryan Herring, zero to Locked On Badgers. Thank you for making this one of your first listens every day as we continue to build this Badger community. Uh, very, very excited to talk to today's guest. Gus Yaldin, as I mentioned, is joining the show. We're going to bring him on right now. Hey, Gus, what's going on, man? Hey, not much. I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm doing really good. First of all, really appreciate you taking the time to, to jump on the show. I know you're coming from a basketball game. You're probably knowing you, you're probably heading to another basketball game. Um, how did the game go? Um, it was good. We uh, we lost. I was playing with the local team from where I grew up um, in elementary school in Kearney, Nebraska. I was just playing with their high school feeder team um, in their summer league game. Uh, we played Bell West, which is where Chucky Hepburn used to go. Mm -hmm. uh, lost lost by nine points. Uh, I had 32 points it's on 13 to 8. I think I'm losing you. Can you still hear me? In the field. Oh, there you go. So 31 on 13 of 18. Yeah, you lost, yeah, I can hear. Yeah, and you lost by nine. Um, so one of the things that I've heard des described about you, and you tell me if this is wrong or if this is dead accurate, you are a total gym rat. Like, you can, will always be playing basketball somewhere. Yeah, um, I'd say I'm in the gym a lot more than, than regular kids. I, I love basketball. I grew up around basketball. Like, I was in the gym when I was three years old with my mom. Like, uh at the time, I didn't really realize it, but it was just basketball was my sport. Um, but it didn't really come clear to me until, like, sixth or seventh grade. I was a hockey player, and I loved hockey more than anything. Um, and then basketball kind of just took over, uh, and I became really good at it. And uh, whenever I go somewhere or I am somewhere, I like to be in the gym for at least an hour and a half, two hours, because it, uh, it's a place where I can clear my mind. It's like a, a little bit of therapy for me. It's, it's, a, it's really fun. Yeah, I was just asking if like, while you're playing, like even now in summer league, is there something specifically you're working on with your game to try to get a little better? Yeah, so I think a lot of people know me for my low post presence and my outside game. Uh, but I, I like to work in a little bit of a, a mid range game and kind of throw in a different a couple of different counter moves that I can use uh, a little bit of fadeaways, just kind of work on stuff that you don't really see me doing that um, I could see myself doing in the future or that uh, helps me look better and play better. One of the things that I want to do with this interview is get into your game a little bit more. I don't want to just, because I think you've been asked a ton of times why the Badgers, how's recruitment going, et cetera, et cetera. I want to talk about your game a little bit more. When you say working on some counters, Kobe Bryant used to talk about getting into kill zones, spots in the court where he was a lethal from. Where is your kill zone? What spot on the court are you most dangerous from right now? Uh, I am the left block uh, I'd say my efficiency rating's got to be somewhere between 80 and 90% because Ooh. if I get someone on the left block, it's it's pretty much over. Uh, I have a really, really strong right. And from that right hand, I can go into a scoop counter, um, a hook shot, a running hook, um, a fadeaway, kind of a bunch of different series from that right or from that left block. Um, that the thing I'm trying to work on right now is from that left block, block arcing face to give me a little bit more advantage i think i think we're losing you again in and out guys that i'm gonna have to play against in the big 10 so you're still Am cutting I in and out me? a little bit yeah we're just we're, i'm just getting bits and pieces uh <laughs> you're in the middle of nebraska there's there's not enough cell phone towers uh what about now uh sounds great yeah you're back i know this so is, i got most uh, of that I, though. I would now all right all right perfect so yeah, so just trying to work on different uh, – I'm trying to work on a left, left foot fadeaway from it, uh, kind of a uh, dribble to the middle, sigma, uh, turn and face, yes. dribble to the middle, spin back right if I don't get anything, up and under to the middle. Um, and then uh, a big thing that I, I'm known for is if you scout me is I have a really good left-hand drive, spin back, finish on my right hand. Um, and from that, I kind of want to work on – uh, a low cross uh, pickup to get to the right hand or uh, kind of a, uh, like a put it on my, put it on my wrist, uh, push off his back a little bit, go over to that. Um, 
I'm just trying to trying to experiment experiment with different ways to get to that back to that right side from a left-handed drive. Um, and then I'm trying to work on my left hand every day. Um, uh, it's just a habit being a right-handed guy mm -hmm. that I want to shoot with my right hand on the left side. Uh, but I'm trying to work on a left-handed hook, uh, left-handed scoop finishes and kind of just left-handed layups in general. And just knowing your game and, and having watched you a ton of film and talking to people that know you, the other part about being on that block that's so dangerous with you is they can't send help, right? Cause you are great at finding the cutter, finding an open shooter. You have a great feel for the game. Uh, did that come naturally or is that something that you've had to work on in some way? Uh, it kind of was forced to happen uh, because I was taller than everyone else growing up. So when like I got the ball, I was just double teamed at mm. first sight since like fifth grade. Um, so I had to learn that I can't play through double teams and I can't shoot through double teams. So when you send that double, it, it just kind of makes me think, all right, there's one guy open. Like we're in a five on four now. Um, someone's right. cutting, someone's got to be open. And then you just have to identify who that guy is. Cause it's, it's the chances are, it's going to be the guy running to the hoop or the guy who's standing open in, in the corner on the wing. And then you just go from there. So I've had to, I've, I've had a lot of time to be able to practice and figure out, all right, here's where I need to pass and when, and I can read when the double's coming and when it's going to leave and kind of where it's coming from a little bit. So I kind of just, from early on, I, I was able to recognize double teams and kind of play through them since since I was a little kid. Do you take it personally when they don't double you? A little bit. It's <laughs> it's just it, it means that they think their uh, their guy can guard me one on one, and and sometimes they can, but uh, other times I just think right now my my size and strength is just unmatched in the EYBL and and in high mm -hmm. school. There's there's a, probably I could say a handful of guys, maybe 10, 20 guys who could play me solid defense every single time down the court in a one-on-one -on -one situation in the post. Hey, with NIL happening and call EA college sports, EA sports has said they're going to come out with college games again, right? So there's a chance you're going to be in an EA sports college basketball game, which is going to be phenomenal and awesome. How would you, how would you rank yourself in, in an EA sports game? Like what score should you get from the EA team in post moves? Oh, in post moves, I'd say anywhere from a, a 94 and above, I'd say. Um, and I'm, I'm so excited. So I'm a little bit of a nerd, too. So yes, I, I love it. I, I still play NCAA 14 on my yes. PS3. So I, I'm really excited that EA is coming out with it again. Yeah, I've been waiting for it. I've downloaded the mods onto the PS3. Yep. I've done everything I could to make it like it's, it's a new game. But I'm just so excited for them to to give me a, a new feel and a new game to play, I, I, I can't, can't wait. You you and a million other fans, man, we're all excited about it. We've all done the mods, so having it yeah. come back is incredible. Um, and I agree with you. On the post rating, you got to be in the mid-90s. You, you got to be anything else, and they're doing you a disservice. Yeah. What about what about passing? Where, where are you at in passing, 0 to 100? Um, I think I'm a good passer, but I'm, I'd, I'd probably say – Upper to mid 80s, uh, for sure. I think I don't have the passing tools of, of a really good guard, but I know that um, out of a double team, I can pass. Uh, in the open floor, I can pass. And then out of the post, I'm a great passer. So I, I'd say you got to give me some respect and put me in that yes. mid to upper 80s. Yeah, I think you're dead on. Uh, last one I'm going to hit you with for the, the, the shooting, uh, three-point shooting. Um, I'm a, I'm a decent three point shooter. I've had a little bit of a slump in the beginning of the spring. Now I'm kind of back into my groove. Um, I probably say again, mid mid eighties, probably like an 84, 85 three point shooter, because, um, there's some games where I, I know I could, if I get hot, I could, I could light up five, six, seven of them. And then there's other games where I'd be lucky if I can get one or two to go in. So I, I'd probably say mid mid eighties. Hey, and I love this conversation because I, I really like talking about your game. Uh, I want to piggyback into you said you were in a little bit of a slump earlier in the year. Why? Why were you in a slump? Did you ever do? You, are you the type of player that really analyzes it, or you do just not worry about it and keep shooting? Um, I mean that's what my mom and like everyone was telling me is just keep shooting. But those first two EYBL sessions, like um, after I got injured my junior year, it kind of to me like I, I fell hard in the rankings. Like I was a top 20 player in the country. And then mm -hmm. you don't see me play for a while. And I, I dropped to uh, the high nineties, almost a hundred. So to me, like I just felt really disrespected coming into it. And I felt like I had so much to prove 
uh, to so many people, to college coaches, to the people who do the rankings, to the like the whole country. I felt like I, it was me against the world, kind of. Um, and then once I committed to Wisconsin, and I kind of like realized that. Like now I'm in a place where I just have to perform to the best of my abilities because they're going to take me no matter what. Like I think we're in a place right now where I'm going to sign my letter of intent and I'm going to be on campus regardless. Um, right. And to me, it's just like now it's playing freely, playing without that weight on my shoulders. I, I kind of gave up. Like to me, the rankings don't mean anything. You can look at some of those guys who are in those spots now. And if you saw them play in person, you'd question to yourself why they're there. Um, so to me, it became kind of a political battle that I wasn't going to do, do anymore. And I just wanted to play to the best ability that I could and, and kind of just go into it. But the slump has finally ended and I'm, I'm back to hitting shots. I love it, man. Uh, is that something that fans under underappreciate the amount of pressure recruiting is? I think it definitely is. Like I, I think everyone thinks recruiting is – all, all fun and games, all happy, all smiles. Everyone's pleased. Uh, but it's a lot. Like, there, there's the recruiting ups and downs. Uh, you get recruited by some schools, and then it gets filled with the transfer portal kid or mm -hmm. another kid commits over you, and, and then you're, you're looking at it, and you're like, all right, well, now i got to look somewhere else. Um, and when I got hurt, it really became evident to me, like, who, was, who wanted to be involved and who didn't want to be involved anymore. Um, and, like, that made it a little bit easier, but it also made it harder because – Schools also who were interested in me were like, all right, well, he got hurt. Is he an injury prone kid? How's he going to be after the injury? So it's, it's definitely a tough and it's just, it's time consuming for sure. You, you got to answer text messages on time because you don't want to leave a coach undelivered. You got to answer your phone. Like, right. it's, it's, a, it's almost a full-time job, but at the same time, you're one of probably a hundred, 200 kids getting to do it. So you may feel stressed and you may feel pressured, but at the end of the day, you're going to be a kid who's going to college for free, who's going to be playing mm -hmm. on TV and, and, and playing at the, one of the highest levels you can play at. No, I think it's a great perspective, though, because despite everything you just said, it is an incredible opportunity. It's still a lot of work and still a lot of pressure, and I don't think yeah. enough is given to that. You know, yeah, uh, I want to. I want to end up on this portion here because I, I have a few more questions I want to ask you, and I really appreciate the time. Um, so, But I want to end on your game with this question. If you were coaching against a team with you, how would you defend you? Like, how, how would you coach a team defending Gus, Gus Yaldin if you were in that spot? Like, like I said earlier, I have, a, I have a left hand, but I don't want to use my left hand just because I, I'm, I'm naturally a righty. So I'd tell the kid who was guarding me to sit on that, on that left shoulder and not let him get to it. And then every time I put the ball on the ground, I would dig hard with two, but not mm -hmm. double. Cause I, I, you can't double me cause I'm going to pass. But if you dig hard, I have to pick up. And when I pick up, I have to find someone else out of it. Um, and I can't go to that move that I want to go to. So I'd say the second you see me going to make the dribble, you dig hard, dig hard, and you sit on that right shoulder. Um, and then another thing that's undervalued about my game is um, a pick and roll. So I would, uh, I'd say on the screens is I wouldn't want to switch and I wouldn't want to hedge. I'd want to, I'd want to force the guard to make the shots and I'd want to go under or oh, and then if he starts hitting, push him over because right. uh, if I get a guy on my hip in a pick and roll, it's it's, it's easier to seal catch and, and get right. to something from there. So they, that's probably how I defend myself. And if they switch, you're just going to punish that in the in the post. Yeah, um, yeah, a hundred percent. Are you a player people can get under your skin? Do people try to get under your skin? Yeah, I I mean, I, I was known for in the longest time. I was the biggest smack talker out there. I've heard um, this. And then I kind of I kind of started to to value the relationships I could build um, on on the court. So I gave it up a little bit. But like to me, the, the biggest thing is, is like uh, the bench, like the opposing bench, that's who I could get into it with. Um, I don't really get into it with my matchup that much. Um, but it's like, where we play an away game, the student section, uh, kind of just proving them wrong and, and, and aggravating them a little bit at the same time. So it's kind of like, uh, being, uh, my, my matchups friend. And then the, the rest is just my enemies. So I think, uh, it's tough to get under my skin. Um, it's, it's took a while, but I, 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 in the beginning, it was pretty easy. I, I got flustered. I got angry. I got 
I was mad. I played mad. And, and now it's kind of like, well, like they're paying to watch me play now or, or they mm-hmm. came to watch me play and they know who I am. So it's kind of kind of gone down to just let me just just watch and I'll show you what I can do. Today's show, guys, is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online remains your number one source for all your sports betting needs and information. We've talked about Wisconsin. We've talked about the NFL. Tons of futures, props. It's a great, great spot. If you have a few dollars, do it responsibly, but test your sports knowledge. Go to the website. It's easy to use. It's intuitive. Bet Online has all your future props. It also has live casino games, blackjack, roulette. Um, everything you want is on this website. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions. Uh, Bet Online, where the game starts. And we're going to jump back in with Gus Yalden, uh, 2023 Wisconsin commit. Really appreciate the time. I wanted to read you a couple, Gus, a couple um, Twitter comments. All good stuff. But I'm curious where your take is on these. You ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. So this is from uh, Evan Flood, who is the 247 uh, Badgers reporter. Very physical game. Gus Yalden getting under the skin of the opposition and drawing a lot of fouls. Now, I've heard – from several different spots and watch your game, like you're, you're taking charges, you're defensively all over the, you like, you're really kind of in a high intensity guy. Is that a part of your game that uh, you're proud of? Is that something that you've worked on or is it just a natural way that you play the game? Um, it's something I had to like learn to be able to do. Uh, when I was at IMG with some of the nation's best players, McDonald's all Americans, NBA draft picks, uh, players who I know are going to be really special someday. Like I wasn't going to be getting 15, 20 shots a game Mm -hmm. and I wasn't going to be on the court because they needed me on offense. So I had to figure out a way for them to have to play me and for them to have to play me. I have to rebound. I have to defend the ball screen. I have to defend the post and I have to take charges because that's what they, they preach just take charges. So, when, when I started to figure it out, it was – it kind of became I can be like a Draymond Green kind of glue guy, but I can also play like a guy who needs to make shots, who needs to play on offense, who – like I could play both sides of the ball. So when I was at IMG, I learned a lot of the Dennis Rodman, Draymond Green kind of dirty work side of the ball. And then growing up and, and now it's kind of how to be – an offensive uh, work how, a workhorse, get up shots, get up threes, get into the post, kind of play through you. So when when Evan, who I really respect and is a really good guy, and I've known yep. since I was in middle school, um, said it, 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 it's I'm getting under kids' skin because it, it's frustrating to go think you're going to get a wide open layup, um, and then a kid just steps in front of you, and and now you have a foul, or. When I, when I throw a pump fake and, and you think I'm going up a second time or even a third time and you come down and you hit my arm, you, you get another foul. So, right. or you go to get a re, rebound and I, and then I might not be taller than you and I might not, I'm definitely not more athletic than you, but I have a long enough reach that I can tip it to a teammate or tip it up into the air, get right back and get it to myself. So I think the under the skin part, there's just stuff in my game that, you don't think I'm going to do, or you don't think I would do that. I, I'm going to do to make sure that I can do it so that one, my team can win it. And two, it helps me be more successful and keeps me on the floor. Well, and over the course of 40 minutes that you can definitely see how that would get under someone's skin because they're just not used to players doing all those little things, all the intangible stuff. Like it's kind of a rare attribute. Yeah, a hundred percent. And that's something my, my mom taught me uh, when I when I was looking to get on the court. It's like you got to do the stuff that nobody else wants to do, and and then you'll play, because nobody wants to do it. So they're not practicing it. They're not working on it, uh, and you can't really practice taking charges or rebounds or defending. You just gotta keep forcing yourself to take them when you don't want to, or forcing to yourself to play the rep as hard as you can in practice and uh, and and build build up from there. Yes, uh, spacing. Providing spacing at the college level, Wisconsin didn't shoot it real well last year. Is that something that you think you're going to be able to come in and, and provide pretty quickly? Um, in terms of spacing, I know that it's uh, – like like you said, it, you can't really double me because you know I can pass. Um, and the one-on-one, it's, it's not – like I, I have a good chance of scoring down in the paint. So I think the spacing is definitely going to be something I can, I can help with and – and provide um, in my time at Wisconsin. But I also think another thing I'm going to be able to do is free up shooters. Um, I have a really good tendency to set good back screens, good flare screens. Uh, I, I'd, I'd say there's not a single person in the country in high school basketball right now who's set to 
better screen than I do. Um, so I'd say that's something that I'm going to really be able to contribute to is just, can you hear me? Yeah, I still hear. I'm losing you a bit to the, so we're in I the think, cornfield again. See, yeah, Iowa. Well, how about this? Uh, can you hear me right now? Yeah. So why don't we cut it here? I already, this has been a great interview. Yeah, I like, just it's been incredibly yeah, can, insightful. Yeah, I'm sorry about the, the data cutouts. It's just, uh, can't really do much about it. No, it's it's Iowa's fault. We blame Iowa for all sorts of things on this show. Yeah, yeah, we're good, we're good. So yeah, I I think let, that. Uh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, let's wrap up on this. I I definitely want to ask you one final question, and this is a good one to wrap up on. In four years, looking back at your Wisconsin career, what do you hope to to accomplish? Like, what is your what do you want to be able to look back at at Wisconsin? I want revenge for what happened in 2015. Um, yes. I want a national championship. I, I would love to have that. Um, like I've said in a couple of interviews, um, that national championship game left me in tears and kept me home from school the next day and had probably the biggest heartbreak you think you could ever have, mm-hmm. probably worse than your girlfriend breaking up with you. So to me, I want to win a national championship. I want to win – as much as I can, I want to win the Big Ten regular season. I want to win the Big Ten tournament. I just want to win, and I want to individually. Um, I want to be one of the best players that I can be in Wisconsin history. Um, I want to hopefully be a Big Ten Player of the Year, uh, All Big Ten team. Uh, give my chance, give myself the chance to be able to play in the NBA one day with uh, how I played in college. Um, I just want to see myself as a winner and someone who was really successful. Um, but without, uh, without the winning part, you can't really have the success part because I don't think the Big Ten is going to pick uh, a kid who, who might be averaging 20 and 10 a game, but his team is 3 and 22. He's not going right. to be a Big Ten player of the year. So to me, the stats are great, but if we're not winning, then to me, it really doesn't matter. So it's going to be about finding ways to impact the game at all levels, offense, defense, even when I'm not off the, even when I'm not on the court, um, just so I can help us win. So, I'd say the big thing I want to look back at is how many rings I'm going to have on my finger. Oh, that's an awesome answer, man. Badger fans are going to love that, uh, and I'm right there with you with that 2015 loss. That was devastating. Yeah. Um, so so painful. Um, Gus, thank you so much for the time, man. I know you're driving through cornfields in Iowa, and you stuck with us. I really really appreciate it. No, thank you so much. I'm, I'm glad I got the chance to come on today. I'm glad I got to talk to you. And uh, I'm sorry uh, it was a little rough, but uh, I, I really enjoyed it. No, it was awesome. And hopefully, uh, again, in the future, we'll connect and we'll, we'll have another talk. But, yeah, you were very insightful, man. You're really good at this. It seems like you've had some practice. Uh, a little bit. I've been doing, <laughs> it, doing the, these kind of things for yep. uh, a couple of years. So uh, I, I'd like to say I'm, I'm all right at them. All right, Gus. Hey, have a good weekend. Safe travels. You too. Talk to you later. All right, thanks. Bye. All right, bye. bye Guys, Gus Yaldin, uh, just an awesome interview. Really enjoyed it. Really insightful. You know, one of the things you pick up from that conversation is he has a very mature look at his game. He's able to self-analyze. Uh, where do I need to get better? How is a team going to attack me? You know, there's a lot of players, if you were to ask them, hey, how would you guard you? I don't know if they'd have a great answer. And he goes right into it. You know, sit on sit on the, my, my left or sit on my right, maybe dribble left, dig in hard, but don't double. Really smart player. I think he's going to do incredibly big things at Wisconsin. I was stoked to talk to him today. Um, appreciate everyone sticking it through with a few of the technical difficulties we had. But, again, we'll blame Iowa. Doesn't have the cellular service yet, apparently. Thank you, everybody, for making Lockdown Badges your first listen every day. Really appreciate y'all. And more content coming. Today was Gus Yaldin. Just an awesome, awesome interview. Really appreciate his time. And we'll talk later.